this will be a teardown of a Pfeiffer TPD-011 uh, turbo uh, molecular drag hybrid. This pump I got off of eBay in uh, for parts condition. It has a bad bearing and may not be able to be repaired due to the fact that they are generally considered obsolete. I have several of these pumps that I have up and running. They are extremely nice pumps. One of the main benefits is that this type of molecular drag hybrid pump can run with a backing vacuum of around 20 torr, which puts it well within the range of being backed by many diaphragm pumps. So a typical four-stage diaphragm pump can get down to around 500 millitor. So that, that's more than sufficient to back one of these pumps. They run on 24 volts DC and have their own integrated controller, and that controller is the uh, TC100 controller by Pfeiffer. I've already removed all the screws from this, so I'll just start to tear this down. So this is the Pfeiffer TC100 controller. It has a DB15 pin on the input and the Pfeiffer uh, connector for the pump on the output. This plugs in and is connected by two bolts there. This runs on 24 volts. It can take uh, digital input lines for control, or you can control it over an RS-485 interface. This is the main pump, ba pump body. Here is the input power connector for the pump. On this side there was a backing connector that has been removed already. So both these ports are tied together and then tied to the backing pump. The inlet of the pump has an NW25 uh, flange which, is, which requ requires claw clamps and then there's the inner rotor. So taking this pump apart, we'll start from this end. If we remove the bearing cover, we can see the bearing assembly in here. So this is the bearing holder, and then there is an oil wick, which um, this will be saturated with turbo oil, and there is a shaft for the bearing. These pull out, kind of have to rotate it a bit. Just pull out like that. Um, there's the front and the back. The bearing is right here, it just sits inside it. Um, there's a little shim spring there, let me get that in. So this bearing is the one that's bad, as you can see it's lost the uh, polyamide cage around the silicon nitride balls, so that one would have to be replaced. Removing this stage of the pump you can start seeing some of the molecular drag channels both on the inside and outside. Continuing to remove the parts. This is one of the other molecular drag channels for the rotor. That fits there. And now you can just pull the rotor assembly out of the pump. So there is the rotor. There, this right here is the turbo pump blades. It's held by a disc that runs down the center to the rotor shaft. And then here, those two layers are the molecular drag stages. This bearing on the bottom you can see still has the polyamide cage in there for the balls, so that one still may be functional. Removing the center of the pump body, you can see the input NW25 connect uh, flange. And there is the hollow center of the pump. And on this side, the pump is just identical, with the exception that the uh, motor is in this side of the pump. So you have the molecular drag stage, and then the pump body. And under this bearing cover, you can see that the motor windings are here. All right, so let's go through how this pump actually works. So gas molecules would be 
in the vacuum range with tur which turbo pumps op operate, the mean free path would be much, much greater than the vacuum chamber dimensions, so the, part so the gas molecules would just be bouncing around on the inside. Occasionally, one, occasionally they would wander into the pump body, they would come into contact with the turbo blades and be pulled down into the pump, at which point this entire rotor assembly is spinning, and the um, drag between the surface of these carbon fiber cylinders and these helical notches in the body uh, literally drag the gas molecules, hence the name molecular drag, uh, along the axis of the pump. Actually, let me just put that one on. So the gas molecules are dragged up here, then they go around the corner and are dragged along this helix, which you can see is a finer channel and tighter pitch. They're dragged down to the bottom of that rotor assembly, then they round the corner again on the inside to a molecular drag stage here. These are very narrow channels with very fine pitch. There, the gas molecules are transported up to the exhaust flange where they are pumped out by the backing pump. Now the two sides are of the pump are isolated by the disc that holds the turbo um, vein rotor. So each of these two backing ports is connected independently and then they are tied together. So that's the basis of how the Pfeiffer TPD-011 pump works. These have been replaced by a newer model called the High Pace 10, which is basically the same pump except it has a nicer controller and I'm told they have some modifications on maybe the bearing and lubrication system. So that's all for this pump. I'll come back with a later video showing how this is built into a portable turbo station with some of the operational pumps that I have.